Many developers aren't even really aware of the power of refactoring to improve design, particularly if they're using languages like JavaScript or Python, since historically these languages have had much worse tool support. That may be changing. And refactoring is such an important everyday design skill for enhancing and extending existing code in any language. I meet a lot of developers through my work as a technical coach. Basically, all of them could benefit from being better at refactoring. In this video, I'm going to do the same design transformation in several programming languages, including JavaScript and Python. The goal is not so much to showcase the tools or the IDE, although I might do that. It's more to give you examples that you can follow when you're learning refactoring steps and practicing with your own tools. Hi, I'm Emily Bache. I'm a software developer and creator of Saman Coaching. Welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, please take a look around and I hope you'll like what you find enough to want to subscribe. For regular viewers, I have some news. You may have noticed some changes. I mean, it's been a huge, fun challenge for me personally to make all the videos over the last nine months or so. And I'm grateful to everyone who's been supporting me. However, I haven't been as successful as I'd hoped. So in the coming weeks, I'm going to be sharing new videos less frequently and fewer of them will be professionally produced. My main job is as a technical coach. I help organizations to build developer skills and the culture needed to raise code quality and productivity. And I found through this work that it works even better when there are team learning sessions based around the videos I've been making. So I'm still planning to make more of those and continually working with the Saman Technical Coaching Society to provide other materials and training for coaches. But this is a change of pace for my YouTube channel. Enough news now. Let's get back to today's topic, refactoring. In this demo, I'm going to show the same refactoring in several programming languages. I'm going to transform a class method, which is also called a static function, into an instance method using the Yahtzee refactoring cutter. Just in the interest of full disclosure, these demos all use IDEs from JetBrains, which they've given me a free license for as part of their community contributors program. First, let's show you this refactoring in c -sharp. I've got this class Yahtzee1, which has a class method chance, which calculates the score in the Yahtzee category chance. You don't need to know that. The point here is I want to refactor this to be an instance method instead. I want to take you through the steps. Before we do any refactoring though, let's run the tests and check that they're all passing. Yep. Okay, and let's go. This is the method implementation then, which I would like to transform. So the first thing to try is just to look at the refactor this menu for this method and transform to static is not on there. Uh, we need to do a bit more work before we can do this. Um, it needs an instance of the class to be one of the arguments before it will do that. So the first thing is to create an instance of the class. So the constructor takes these five parameters for all the dice and they're the same five parameters that were passed to the chance method. So we just pass them on. If I um, just run the test, this has done nothing. It's just a class that's not being used. But there's the constructor and you can see what it does with these arguments, it puts them in an array, uh, the dice, and that's a data member on this class. So also to turn it from a static or class method to an instance method, we need to use the, the data member um, instead of the arguments. So that's probably the next thing to do. If we just now flip back to the implementation of chance, you see here where it's using all of these um, arguments that were passed in. So I'm just getting multiple cursors here so that I can update them all at once to instead use my data member. And just a bit of uh, trickery there to uh, get the, uh, the uh, indices right. So that all works fine um, now. So I'm using this new instance within the static method. So the step from here to making this to an instance method is now much easier. So if I introduce this as a parameter to the method, See, it just puts it there at the end of the argument list. Um, and that makes the code look a bit strange, but the tests are still working. If we go and look at um, here where it's being called, you can see it looks odd because we've got all the uh, those arguments being passed kind of twice. Uh, once to this new argument at, at the end of the list and 
as well as all the arguments. So, so this code looks odd. I wouldn't check it in in this state. But now we've got this additional argument in the list there. I've got an instance of the class. And when I look at the refactoring menu, that, that option there, make method non-static, is suddenly on the list, which it wasn't before. And that makes it possible to do. And it says, well, which instance parameter is it? Yeah, it's this one. I just added it. And now this code actually looks sensible. Um, well, mostly sensible. Um, you can see now that we're constructing a new Yatsi one class instance with lots of arguments and then calling chance with the same arguments. So there's a little work remaining to be done here. We need to remove these arguments. They're superfluous. And rather than just deleting them by hand, I'm going to use the change signature uh, refactoring because it just does all of the work for me and um, updates in all the places it's being called. So that um, should complete this. Let's run the tests. Yes, test passing. And if I just look at the test, that looks fine as well. So that was the refactoring in C Sharp. Now the same refactoring in Java. So same thing, I'm going to start by just running the tests to check that they're all OK. It's always good before you refactor to see those green tests. Great. And let's go to the implementation. So as you can see, it looks pretty similar to the C-sharp we saw earlier. And we're going to try and use the same strategy. So first, creating an instance of the Yatsi class and passing it all of the arguments. Um, I auto-complete for my editor there. And uh, then just run the test again. That new um, instance isn't being used. It doesn't affect anything. Then we need to update all of these uh, data members to inst um, all of these arguments to instead use the data member that we've now got in the instance. So again, the editor trickery to get all those updated uh, in a good way. OK, so the tests should still be passing. Yep. Um, and then this I want to make a parameter. So uh, let's just see it did that for me. And then it even when it updated the parameters there, it, it took away the ones that weren't being used. I mean, IntelliJ just kind of thought, oh, you're not using those anymore. I'll get rid of them. Great. Um, so that took away some of the steps. And the code now still works, but this method's still static. Um, and there in the test, we can see that it's still static, just passing the argument. But this is very easy to um, convert to an instance method using the tool. And uh, there, it's done it. Uh, I think we're ready. So um, actually, in Java, it was uh, in some ways even easier than it was in C Sharp. Are you enjoying the content today? Don't forget you can support my work and get additional resources through Patreon. I'm about to show the same demo in Python, then JavaScript. OK, so first run the tests. Check that I've got good coverage. Yep, very fast. And here's the implementation. Again, I need to take the first step, which is to create an instance that I'm going to put this on. So nice autocomplete there. I can construct my instance. So far, so good. Test still passing. Then the same um, use of my multiple carrots um, to put in the data member instead of the arguments and just fix the indices there. So that's all still working. And at this point, I would like to now introduce a parameter. And when I ask the tool to do that, it says no can do. It doesn't really tell me why. Um, but it won't do it. So anyway, I need to have another strategy in Python because the tool doesn't seem to support introduce parameter. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to extract this part of this as a method. And it can do that. Extract method kind of works in Python here. And I can name it chance2 um, just so I don't get it confused with the original. Uh, so that should work. Yep. So now I have a new static method with the um, instance as an argument. So this one I want to now convert to not be static. Um, and I don't think the tool can do that. So I'm going to do it by hand. So it's just a question of removing that annotation there and updating the call site uh, to um, use the instance instead of passing the instance. And that looks strange now with why there. So it needs to be called self. So that was the make method non-static uh, done by hand, basically. But it's it was less work than it would have been originally because I only have one place where the method is being called. So there was only one call site to update. So I'm doing well. I've now got 
a non-static method with the correct signature. But unfortunately, of course, all the places are still using the old method. So if you just go and look at those, they're still using the old static method. And I would like to update these to use the new method. And the easiest way to do that would be to inline this method. So I'm asking my tool to inline this and it's saying no can do, um, which, OK, so decorators do complicate matters with an inline. So let's see if we can do something about that. So if I go back to the method declaration, I would like to remove the decoration. And I looked around a little way of different ways to do this and I discovered it can offer to convert the static method to a function. And that would, of course, remove the annotation. So I'll try that. So it did it and it's put the new function down here at the bottom of the file. But when I run the tests, they fail. So that wasn't a safe refactoring that my tool helped me with there, unfortunately. So what's actually happened is it's messed up the imports. It's it's kind of um, replaced this with a call to the correct function, but it hasn't updated the imports. So I can do that. Um, and now the tests are passing again. So, so I managed to recover from that refactoring error by my tools. But now I actually get the inline function to work. So when I ask it to inline, it says, would you like to remove all the invocations? Um, yes, yes, remove all the, de the declaration. Yes, that's what I meant. Great. So now my code is using my new non-static method and there are no calls left to the original static method. So I've kind of achieved my goal, but there's still a bit of cleanup to do. Um, test passing, that was good. So this y, it's not a good variable name, I should inline it. Um, and that makes the code look more like it did in the first place. And then I should just rename this back to chance. So that completes the uh, refactoring. Um, I now have a non-static method that does what the static method did before. Now what you've all been waiting for, the JavaScript version. So as before, we're going to start by running the tests just to see that this is all working. Yep. And then we're going to go over to the implementation. So the first moves are the same as before. We need an instance of the object we want to move the method to. So we can get one of those fairly easily. Test still working. Then the second move is the same as well. We want to use the data member of that object, the data dice data member, instead of the arguments that are passed to this function. And we'll just adjust those so it all works and looks nice. Although I have to say, this implementation isn't very good. And of course, I want to refactor that too. But at the moment, I'm focusing on just moving this method to the right place, and then I'll fix the implementation later. OK, so uh, I would like to introduce this as a parameter. But my tool is saying, mm, can't do it. Mm. So I I poked at this a bit and I couldn't make it do it. So I went to the next uh, best strategy, which was to extract this part as a function, um, because then I get that with just one argument, which is the instance. So I'm going to call that chance2. And it's put the new function there. Um, but it says it's unused. It's a bit worrying. And of course, the test <laughs> fail now. So it made a mistake when it did the extract method. Um, it's put in this this dot when it didn't need that. And when I remove that, it now works. So the tools aren't as good for Java, JavaScript as they are with the other languages we've looked at. OK, so the next step is I want to move this function so that it's within the scope of that object y. And I'm looking at the refactor this menu to try and see if there's a good option that will do that for me. And I'm not seeing it. So I think I need to do this part by hand. So I'm going to um, just work out where it is I want to move it to. So I'm just going to rearrange my windows a bit so that I can see uh, the new place where I want to put the code. It's going to be here inside that Yahtzee function declaration there, um, alongside all those data members. And the first step then is to just copy this function into that new scope. So I'll just make sure I grab the right bit of code and then copy it into here. So this um, is now not declared in the right with the right syntax. And my um, syntax highlighter can help me with this part. I just want to um, declare this as a function within that other function. And then we've got this implicit this that we should use instead of that argument. So now I've got a new function. 
It's not being called, but syntactically it's working and my tests are passing. So now the next step is to move over to where I want to call it and flip over to using that new function I've just created. So that part was now pretty straightforward. And this function I've got here is unused. So I, did, I chose to do that refactoring in small safe steps where I was copying the code so that I wasn't breaking anything immediately until I had the new thing working and then it was easy to transfer over. That's called parallel change. Okay, so the next part is I want everywhere to use my new chance to function. So if we uh, go over to where it's being used in the test, I'd like to inline the old chance function so that it would then call the new one. And it's just saying, no, I <laughs> can't inline that. Hmm. Inlining by hand is really tedious. So I poked at this a bit more to see if I could get it to do it. And I discovered that if I first inline that declaration, in inline that variable, now this entire function is just one line. And when I go and try and inline it again, it says, yes, I can do that. Great. And it does it for me quite competently. Well, kind of competently. It messed up the, the imports. Um, yeah, the class name is not the name I'm referring it to it here. So I just need to adjust that. But it got me 90% of the way, which I think is a win when it comes to inline. And then the last step is just to rename uh, the chance method so that it's um, got the same name as it had in the first place. And uh, the refactoring is complete. When I'm coding, I constantly reach my refactoring tools without really thinking about it. Rename, extract, move, inline. I'm improving the software design all the time. And I didn't get this fluent with refactoring by watching videos or reading books. It takes hands-on practice. So I suggest you get hold of the Yahtzee Code Carter and practice the moves that I just showed in these demos using your tools. Happy coding.